when we started selling online for profit and really said like we're gonna dive into this side hustle and try to make money we did it with the intention to make a few extra hundred dollars every month just as a supplement to our income and just have it be something extra that we did to have fun and do something that we enjoyed while also making extra money. But I never ever thought that I would be able to sit in front of a camera and say, we are now making an extra $3,000 profit every month doing this online reselling side hustle. It has become a main part of our income. We love it and we are making good money doing it. And it's only up from here. So if that's something that you're interested, if you're new to this video, stay tuned to see what kinds of things we sell, where we get them, what kind, how much we pay for them, and what our profit is. If you're new here, my name is Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at places like garage sales, thrift stores, flea markets, anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, Make sure to stick around and please make sure to hit that subscribe button with the notification bell turned on. All right, let's get started and see what we sold this week. This is the week of July 23rd through 29th. The first thing we sold was a Vera Bradley lined 6x7 dogwood makeup bag. It was nice because it had like the plastic coated lining inside so that you truly could keep makeup in it. It wouldn't get stained or anything like that. We got this at a garage sale. We paid just a dollar for it and it sold for $14 even on best offer. Vera Bradley is something that I don't pick up unless it's in pristine condition, unless I can get it for really cheap because it just does not resell for that much. But I have noticed if you price Vera Bradley correctly, it will tend to move fast. You just cannot overprice it. Next up is a Zara Woman size extra small white eyelet lace short sleeve tie front button back poplin top. There's a lot of keywords in that title and I included all of them here so you can see, you know, keywords are important, especially for clothing. You really got to think about what you're including, what somebody might be searching for. This we got at a garage sale for $5 and it sold for $20 even on best offer. Next up was a 2020 McDonald's Happy Meal lot of toys. This one was the number eight, number three, and number seven. This was from the Disney 50th anniversary, I think. We got these at the Goodwill bins. We paid 68 cents for them and they sold for $9.68. Next up was an Express Women's Camouflage Mini Skirt. This came out of a storage unit. We paid like $75 for the unit. Our per item cost broke down to just 28 cents. When we purchase a storage unit, we list literally everything we find in there unless it is damaged or stained. And then at that point we will, you know, depending on the, the condition, if it's very, very minor, we'll donate it. If it's in bad condition, we'll just throw it away but we try to get as much money as we can out of those storage units and there is a lot of profit to be made in storage units. This skirt sold for $17 on best offer. Next up was two vintage Blue's Clues VHS tapes. This one was Rhythm and Blue and Magenta Comes Over and we tested them and they work. We always test our VHS. We don't watch the entire video, but we do test a few minutes of the tape to make sure the tape isn't gonna snap because sometimes it'll snap immediately when you put it in the VCR. Sometimes the tracking will be off and that's not something that can be fixed on every single tape. And if it's real fuzzy or has any kind of visual issues on the tape, we just throw those away. So if we test them and after watching them for a couple of minutes, it looks good, we'll, we'll put that we tested it in the title and that means that the tape was in good working condition. So these we got at a thrift store for 26 cents and they sold for our full asking price of $14.99. I've mentioned it before, but vintage 90s VHS kids tapes is a category that we do really well in. There's not really huge profit on some things like Blue's Clues doesn't sell for tons, but we can find VHS for really, really cheap. So the return on investment can be really good on these. Some tapes that you do want to be on the lookout for that have a super high profit margin that you can sell for a lot of money is Barney. 
Little Einstein or um, Baby Einstein. Those are things that um, there's a big collectible market for. Next up was a set of two five minute and 10 minute plastic hourglass sand timers. This was a weird item, not something I would ever seek out, but this was inside of a thrift store toy bag. That's another place where when we get a thrift store toy bag, we try to list everything out of it and maximize our profits because the weirdest stuff sells out of toy bags. I would have never thought these would have sold and they sold super fast. These we paid 26 cents for and they sold for $7.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was a vintage lot of seven black metal photography negative and larger slide holders or carriers. This came from that church rummage sale where we purchased all of the photography equipment. We broke down our cost um, for each of the items costing $1. We had paid $50 in total for everything. We've made tons of money on this purchase. These sold for $35. I would definitely pick up these metal slide carriers if I ever saw them at a garage sale or somewhere else. They had a really good sell through. Next up was an OEM Genuine Dell black USB wired optical mouse. This came from a garage sale. It was in a box of Disney Infinity video game parts that we picked up and this was just an extra piece that was in there. So I said that we paid 50 cents for it. We had paid um, you know, a bulk rate for that box. So I just kind of broke it down like that. Uh, this sold really fast for our full asking price of $12.99. Not something we would have picked up just on its own, but since it was already in the box, we listed it. Next up was a Gymshark men's sage green long sleeve t-shirt. Gymshark is a brand that sells fast. You do have to price it right and it doesn't sell for tons. We got this at a garage sale for $2.50. It sold immediately for $15.98. So, you know, the profit, our, the cost of goods on this was a little bit higher, but the, we will spend a little bit more on something that will move super fast like this. And um, this is an example of that. Next up was a pair of saltwater kids sandals. I had purchased a huge lot of kids liquidation shoes and the majority of them were saltwater shoes. We have been selling them really, really well. We still have lots left, but we are definitely making a dent in that purchase. This pair sold for $35.99 and we had paid $9.09 .09 per shoe, per pair of shoes. Next up was a Jack's Disney Princess replacement dress for an Explore Your World Ariel doll. This came from a Facebook Marketplace purchase. I had purchased a bunch of doll accessories. The majority of them were 18 inch doll accessories for American Girl size dolls. There was Our Generation stuff in there and um, the Walmart brand, which uh, my life has. Uh, we sold that stuff immediately and then we just um, have some leftover, you know, kind of stragglers that were inside the box and we listed everything. This was one of them. This sold for $8.48 and our per item cost from that purchase was 67 cents. Next up was a 2003 Lennard action figure. This one was called Hugo Shadow Ortiz. These look like G.I. Joe fi figures, but the brand is Lennard. And these sell really well. These sell just as well as a G.I. Joe figure, just not for as much. Uh, so we pick these up when we see them. The other brand that we pick up usually is Chap May. Those can sell well too. We paid 25 cents for this one and it sold for $12.99 on our full asking price. Next up was more from that photography purchase that we made. This was a really good sale. This was two listings sold to the same person. So I'll show the tiles over here back to back. The first one was a lot of four Sesco light plastic darkroom film photography 16 by 20 film developer trays. And they all also purchased a lot of six Yankee black plastic darkroom film developer trays in the size 18 by 14. They paid $174.96 in total. That was a best offer, and we had paid just $2 for these at a church rummage sale. Next up was one of the items that we got from the garage sale where we got, had the kitchen trash bags, and it was fill a bag for $10. That was an amazing sale. This sold from that. This was a 31 brand ivory canvas Christmas holiday Merry and Bright zipper pouch. 
31 is another brand I would put kind of on the same level as Vera Bradley as far as the um, how much it sells for and it has to be in really good condition but 31 does sell well. That we paid 33 cents for and it sold very fast for $14.99. I mean it was a Christmas item sold in the middle of summer so that should tell you something about the sell through on 31 bags. Next up was um, a buyer that purchased two items from us and I think both of these items came from storage units but they might have come from two different storage units. So the first thing she purchased was a Rue 21 large solid red sheer roll tab sleeve cinch waist dress and then the other thing she purchased was a Lady Dorby women's plus size sheer black sparkle stripe button up tunic. Um, that tunic had a lot of interest in it too so it was kind of vintage. I don't know that I included vintage in the title but it had a vintage look about it and people seem to be really interested in that one. We got both of these out of storage units. Our cost of goods was 54 cents and these sold together for a total price of $32.76. Next up was a 2004 Kellogg Pop-Tarts storage case. It was a plastic case you could put a single Pop-Tart in use that in your kids lunchbox. This was a collectible item from 2004. Ours did have some paint loss and wear on it probably from you know scuffing around in a drawer or maybe being washed in a dishwasher. We got this at a garage sale for a dollar. It sold for $14.50 and I would probably pick this up if I saw it again. Next up was an item we got at a garage sale but before we move on to that I would like to pause for a moment and invite you to subscribe to our channel if you're not subscribed already. It's the number one thing that you can do to support us and we would really appreciate it. And if you're finding anything helpful or informative about this video make sure you hit that like button to let us and YouTube know that this is content that you enjoy. Alright so let's move on to that garage sale purchase that we made. This was a really pretty, it looked high-end, but as it turned out, it was just an Amazon brand. It was just a really nice Amazon brand. This brand was called Far Value, and it was a women's waterproof belted trench coat. It was an ivory color, and it was a very nice trench coat. We got this at a garage sale for $6, and this sold very fast for $52 even. Next up was a men's extra extra large NFL team apparel Dallas Cowboys polo. We got this at a garage sale for $2 and it sold for $20 even super fast. Next up was a 2015 Hasbro Yokai Watch plush snake figure. It was brand new and we found this at a flea market. We paid $3 for it and it sold for our full asking price of $18.99. It did take kind of a long time to sell but I would probably pick it up again. Sometimes plush is just a long tail item. Not all plush moves super fast. It has to be super rare for it to move fast. Next up was a lot of three Starbucks travel mugs. These were Boston, London, and Taipei. We had them, we had the original lids with them and everything. We got these at an estate sale. We paid $4 in total for them and they sold for our full asking price of $45.99. We did pick up another mug at the time at the same estate sale, but when they were putting the stuff in the bag at the end of the trip, she was literally throwing it like super hard in the bag. And I think when she threw it in, it cracked. So we didn't list that one, but that was frustrating. Next up was a lot of three 18 by 24 National Cutting Horse Association vintage posters. We got these from another business we own, which is a custom picture frame shop. We have all kinds of stuff there that people have brought in and left or things that we've just collected along the years. This is probably something that we just collected along the years. And this sold for an offer to buyer of $18.38. Next up was a pair of Athletic Works Shorty Lounge Shorts. These came from a storage unit. We paid just 28 cents for these and they sold for $12.99 on full asking price. Next up was a British TV series called All Creatures Great and Small. We had seasons one and two on DVD and they were both new and sealed. We got these at a garage sale. 
I have in our spreadsheet that we paid $4, but I think I applied the cost a little bit differently. I think we actually paid a little bit less for these. But these sold really fast for $25.48 on Offer to Buyer. We have found that most British television or British movies do really well on eBay on DVD. So we will pick them up when we see them. Sometimes they don't do well, but a lot of times they sell, and they sell for really high. Um, Acorn is a brand to be on the lookout for. It's a British production company, and BBC. Those are things to look out for to know that it's British. Next up was a 50-pack of 9x12 Melissa and Doug construction paper or drawing pad. It was a drawing pad. We got this at a thrift store for $1.08. It was unused and it sold for $10.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was a 22-piece window cling set of the movie Elf. It was themed for the movie Elf. We got this doing retail arbitrage. This is something we accidented upon, was that these window clings tend to do really well. They are seasonal, so they do tend to sell better at Christmas time, but we sold this one in the middle of summer. We had paid $1.62 for this, after Christmas clearance, and this one sold on Offer to Buyer for $13.58. Next up was an Asus Motherboard Owner's Manual. This was just the user guide only. We did not have the motherboard. If you do see a motherboard, those are worth picking up, even if they're used. Those, some of those will sell for really high. But this was just the user's manual only. And um, we had gotten this at a garage sale. We paid just 25 cents. Sometimes you can get manuals in the weirdest places, and we sell a lot of manuals for all kinds of different things. Do not pass up on listing manuals because they will sell. This one sold for $15 even, and that was on best offer. Next up was a really cute pottery piece by Durango Pottery. This was a gray speckled pumpkin divided soup and cracker bowl, and it was signed on the bottom. We found this in the Goodwill bins. Amazingly, it was not broken, didn't have any chips. We paid a dollar and three cents for it, and it sold on best offer for $36 even. Next up was an item that we got from that fill a kitchen trash bag garage sale. This was a Polaroid Snap White Instant print digital camera. So we tested it, it worked, we actually took a picture and it still had paper in it and it printed the picture and everything. We got two of these cameras. We got one in white and one in blue. We still have the blue, blue one listed and the white one sold. So we had paid just 34 cents for that camera and it sold for $40 even on best offer. Next up was um, another British DVD. This one was called Agatha and the Truth of Murder. This was new and sealed. We found this at a thrift store. For some reason, we paid $2.16, probably because it was British and we thought it would sell for more, but it did end up only selling for $7.98. So if you consider our cost of goods, we lost money on that one, but um, you know, that's no big deal. Most of the items that we sell, we make profit. We very rarely lose money, very rarely. Next up was a vintage lot of three hardcover 1940s Christian hymnals. Some of them were in kind of rough shape. I bought all of these at an estate sale for $9.75, and we ended up lotting them all together. Looking back on it, and based on the kinds of questions that we got, I should have listed them all separately, and I think we would have made more money. But we didn't want to redo the listing, so we ultimately ended up taking kind of a low offer of $26.18 and still made some profit on that. Um, I just think we could have made more had we um, broken this up. Next up was a really pretty 1932 Farber Brothers Cobalt Blue Decanter and Glass set. We found this at a garage sale. They were asking $30 for it. We looked it up, found that it was worth it, and it was. It sold for our full asking price of $149.99. So this is a brand you want to be on the lookout for. And they have several different colors. Cobalt was the one that was selling for the highest. Some of the other colors were not selling for as much. Next up was a James Bond 007 Pierce Brosnan Collection DVD. It was new and sealed. We found this at the Fill a Kitchen Trash Bag garage sale. We paid 34 cents for this and it sold very quickly on best offer for $16. Next up was a King James Version Holy Bible. It was a pocket-sized Bible. 
and it was from 1996. We got this at a thrift store for 81 cents and this one sold for $19.99. This one was a really nice gilded Bible so it did sell for pretty high. And last I'm going to go over all of the collectible cards that sold for my husband's personal collection. This week we only sold one low value card, meaning a card valued at $10 or under. Since it was just one card, I'll tell you exactly what it was. This was a 1989 Fleer Craig Biggio baseball card. It sold for $3 even on best offer and that was on Mercari. All right, well, let's go over the totals for the week of July 23rd through 29th. This week we had 34 sales for an average sale price of $28.67. Our sales totaled $974.83 for a net profit of $526.77. So not quite as good as last week. We did not list nearly as much and so that definitely affected our sales and we also did not have any magic cards listed so that also affected our sales but the other thing i'm going to go over since we are talking about the end of the month here are our july sales in total this includes sales from july 1st through july 31st and i'm going to go over those sales in total so our july sales totaled 181 sales for an average sale price of $31.20. Our sales totaled $5,647.65 and our net profit for the month of July was $3,220.64. And looking at the year in total, our average net profit per month is around $3,000. Sometimes it's a little bit less than $3,000, sometimes it's a little bit more, but it averages out to be around $3,000. So we are really pleased with that. We never thought that we would get to this point when we started eBay, and now we've expanded into other platforms like Mercari and Poshmark, links in the description box below, but it is definitely worth our time, worth doing the side hustle, and we are making all of this extra money now. So if you're looking for a side hustle that can earn you an extra thousands of dollars a month, this is something to consider. It is a lot of work, but we find it to be really, really fun. There's a treasure hunt involved in looking for the item. I enjoy researching the items to put them on eBay and just the entire process of everything. If that is something that your personality type enjoys, this is such a good and fun job to do. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me and let YouTube know by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, consider hitting that subscribe button with the notification bell on so you can be kept informed of all of our future content. Check out the links in the description box below and we will catch you guys on the flip side.